As we arrived in the campgrounds in Randall, Washington, I immediately met two wonderful people, Carl and Kathy. Kathy had just retired as an eighth grade teacher, and Carl? Well, Carl is a gold prospector, and he owns a claim, which is a part of a stream that he works in search for gold. He gladly shared with me and the kids his passion Basically, for gold mining. And as he explained, I immediately water, thought of lessons in science. Here, so as you watch, take, take notes material. and be ready to answer questions in your interactive science notebook. And what we do is see all the black sands and all that, all that black dark stuff. We shake it like this and agitate it and all the lighter materials displaced by the heavier material. We call this blonde, so it comes to the top. You can see the sand, so it comes to the top. And then when I start getting down to the more dense material, like the black stuff you're seeing there, I shake it again. See how it all comes, the lighter stuff comes mm -hmm. to the top? It's called uh, stratifying it. You stratify the material, yep. loosen it all up. These little black rocks that are coming up in there. What are they, Kathy? They are hematites. They are hematites and magnetites because... Strato, which is the layers of the earth. Yeah, if that ever happened, I'd, I'd wet myself. Washing bar, a spray bar, and a spray bar here, and it pumps water up through there. So you take your material, <laughs> that's the word for dirt, and we dump it's it. not dirt. Now I can go get a nugget and I'll show you what will happen. Magnetism and electricity. Oh, okay. Right there. So we'll take this piece of gold, boom, it's in there. Fine. Right? Throw it in the dirt, bury it. And then Carl invited us down to his claim, and I do mean down. It was steep. It was in a secretive location, and it was quite a hike, but it was well worth it. This is an experience that not many people would get, and he was nice enough to just to share this because he loves it. It's not out of a greed. I realized that this was out of a love. Why else would he spend weeks bringing things down, all the equipment and the tools and preparing the path and doing all the things just to, just to get ready for this one season of gold mining. It seems like a lot of work, and it was, for so little. But it is for a love. And this is the site. And I was honored to be there. Carl has all the paperwork for this claim. Uh, it's legal. Everything that he's doing is this labor of love and he has the right to be there. Or does he? In pursuit of happiness, he should be able to be there doing what makes him happy, bringing him joy. But what's the effects on the river? What are the effects on the microorganisms that live there? What are the effects on the biodiversity of the area? That's a greater question. So what happens when environmental preservation and personal constitutional rights intersect? And that's the argument that I want us to engage in. I want us to, to determine who is right, who is wrong, or is there a place in between? And we want to present that argument and support that argument with evidence. That's the time to find the evidence. My son here, he's guilty as well, moving those rocks. What changes and the effects does that have on the environment? Is it about innocence? Or is it about maliciousness? 
or does the intent even matter? This is for you to decide. So come back, ready to present your argument with evidence.